Hi, my name is Chelsea Sedrain, and today I'll be talking about verifying inverse model neural networks using JUMP. First, I'll explain inverse problems and inverse models. At their core, they involve trying to reconstruct some state of the underlying system from noisy observations. There are many nonlinear inverse problems that we'd like to solve. These range from image reconstruction in the medical domain to state estimation problems in the aerospace domain. I'll use a real-world airplane fuel gauge as a case study throughout this presentation. The fuel tanks of an airplane are typically located in the wings. In our case study, there are pressure sensors placed throughout the fuel tank to measure the liquid level. Given a set of noisy pressure measurements, we would like to estimate the fuel mass. Neural networks provide a compelling solution for solving nonlinear inverse problems because they can be trained from data, can invert arbitrarily complex and stochastic forward models, and for our airplane fuel gauge case study, they perform well. However, this does leave us with a new problem. Neural networks are black boxes without strong theoretical guarantees. You can use testing, but here are some plots that have come from an error we made while working on this project that demonstrates how testing can be unreliable. We accidentally trained a fuel gauge model on regular grid points and then evaluated that model on those same regular grid points. The results are shown in the plot on the left. The error was pretty low, but then we realized our mistake and evaluated the model on randomly sampled points, as shown on the right, and the error was much worse which meant that the, air had over, the model had overfit to the regular grid points, but we didn't know it had overfit when we used the wrong testing distribution. In order to avoid this kind of misleading result, my thesis proposes the use of verification techniques for certifying inverse model neural networks. Say we had some sample points from a testing-based approach that made us think our black function lay within the green region, which would be bad because we can see that it doesn't, in contrast, a verification approach could certify over a continuous domain that the function lies within the green region or produce a counterexample, as in this case it should and would. Our solution is to use optimization-based neural network verification. The forward measurement model and the inverse model are encoded into an optimization problem. We can then solve for the error between the true fuel mass and the estimated fuel mass. The fuel mass and estimated fuel mass are variables. Our objective is the difference between these two values, and we'd like to maximize it to get the maximum error. And the measurement model and inverse model neural network are represented as constraints, connecting the, two, the true mass and estimated mass. And there are, of course, some intermediate variables. In jump, this looks like we first define a model, then define state variables, encode the measurement model, and the inverse model. Then we define the error, set as our objective, and maximize it. But you might be wondering, those black lines of code, how do they work? That's where the magic happens, isn't it? What if the measurement model is nonlinear? How does that affect the optimization? Well, this isn't the focus of this talk, so I won't go into too much detail, but we handle nonlinear functions in the forward measurement model by replacing them with the two piecewise linear bounds. This method for approximating nonlinear functions is implemented in our overt.jl package. Once we've approximated the nonlinear measurement model with piecewise linear bounds, if we restrict the inverse model neural network to a ReLU activated network, which might look something like this, then everything is piecewise linear. And we can solve this as a mixed integer linear program. If you're curious to encode, for example, a ReLU activation function, max of x and zero, we would use binary variables, delta, delta equals zero, then the output of the function is zero. If delta equals one, then the output equals the input. We developed a package called expression to MIP.jl. 
which can take a function composed of smooth nonlinear and piecewise linear functions, like I've given an example of here, max sine x over 2 and x, and encode an over approximation of it into a mixed integer linear program. If we run the code from the last slide, we can see we get a tight lower bound on the minimum, which is good. Next, we'll return to the problem, verifying using this to verify inverse model neural networks. So we chose to examine how the error of our neural network varied over the domain. This meant discretizing the domain into a bunch of little cells and solving an optimization problem over each of them. We made this computationally feasible by doing the following things. Once most of the constraints in the model had been encoded, we copied the model and added the remaining constraints that differentiated each cell. This is important because the encoding process was expensive. We then passed these subproblems to PMAP, a function from distributed.jl. And this was shockingly simple. It required reformulating the problem into self-contained units, which took a few days. But other than that, it required about just four lines of code to parallelize across however many servers we could. Oh, also, I like progressmeter.jl for progress bars during long tasks. And this is what the results look like. On the right, we have a plot of maximum error in fuel measurement as a function of roll and pitch of the aircraft. And you can see in the bottom right, there's high error. We might need more training data from that area of the state space. And here we have another plot, which shows that the network isn't doing great, about 15% error, but our upper bound on error from optimization in green is pretty tight to the black lower bound on error, which is our job to tell you whether or not the network is performing well. We also demonstrated our approach on a 2D robot localization problem. We have a robot that's trying to estimate its XY location using two range measurements. On the right, we have a plot of, position, of error in X position, and we can see that the network is doing worse in this yellow region towards the bottom center. So in sum, this is our approach to verify a neural network that reconstructs state from noisy observations we encoded the nonlinear forward model and inverse model neural network into a mixed integer linear program. And that's what our results look like. The Julia packages that we developed, as well as the Julia packages developed by others that we used to make this project happen, are listed here. Um, I hope you check them out and use them in your projects. And thank you for listening.